Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to JNK Bank Q4 FI22 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ranish Puva from ICSA Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Inba. Uh, uh, hello and good evening to everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, JNK Bank Q4 FM22 earnings conference call. I would like to thank the management team for giving us the opportunity to host the uh, Q4 FM22 earnings call. From the management team, we have with us today Mr. Baldev Prakash, uh, MD and CEO, and his entire uh, top management team. Uh, we'll start the call with uh, uh, brief opening remarks on uh, FI22 and Q4 FI20 numbers, and then uh, uh, UMD and CEO will lay down uh, this uh, strategy, uh, and then we'll open the floor uh, for Q&A. Uh, I will now hand out the call to uh, Mr. Baldev, sir, for the opening remarks. Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you, Renis, and uh, a very good afternoon and warm welcome to all the participants for the investor brief of GNK Bank for March 2022. Along with me, my uh, CFO, Madam Rajni Shraf, and uh, our uh, Ashutosh Charin, credit head, and Mr. Altaf Kira, head of risk, are there. As this is my first interaction with you after having assumed the role and responsibility as managing director and CEO of GNK Bank, I would like to briefly introduce myself at the outset. My name is Baldev Prakash. I'm a career banker with over three decades of service in the largest public sector bank, that is State Bank of India, where after joining as a professional officer in 1991, I have had the experience of working as in various roles, including the branch head, regional head, and the, the module head, and GM network. And before joining my duties here in GNK Bank, I was discharging uh, my duties as chief general manager of digital and transaction banking, at SBI Corporate Office, Mumbai. Now moving over to my current assignment as MD and CEO of JNK Bank that I assumed on 30th December 21. I would like to share with you my preliminary understanding of the institution, its unique characteristics, strengths, opportunities, and challenges. As I have to present the findings of the diagnostics carried out by me since my joining the institution, my vision, mission, and strategic plan to further capitalize on the strengths, reinforce the financial soundness while addressing the concerns. This presentation may take little extra time, which may curtail the time for question and answer session. I would request your patience here, please. Backed by a rich legacy of over eight decades, the bank has carved out a special position for itself in the financial landscape of JNK and Ladakh. The brand recognition and the recall of the bank in this geography is unparalleled and is it truly a household name, convincingly maintaining the market leadership tag with, with over 65% of the market share. UT government of JNK ownership uh, has further, uh, uh, UT government ownership further enhances the brand value and credibility of the bank. JNK Bank has assumed strategic and systemic importance for the UTs of JNK and Ladakh as the major provider of financial, especially to agriculture and allied activities and MSME to keep the wheels of economy turning and helping the entrepreneurs to realize their economic pursuits. The bank enjoys captive clientele of government employees and pensioners who in addition to maintaining their salary accounts with the bank also significantly contribute to lucrative and healthy personal finance segment as borrowers. Owing to the extensive outreach of the bank over the length and breadth of the twin UTs, it has been able to build an unmatched liability franchise which continues to grow with every passing day. A CASA share ranking among the best in industry and extremely stable retail deposit component confers a cost edge to the bank, which has all along been reflected in comparatively better names which could be further leveraged in the competitive pricing of loans. Designation as agency bank 
for conducting government banking transactions of JNK and Ladakh and lead bank responsibility of 12 of, of the 20 districts of JNK also provides additional armory to the bank for maneuvering the tide to its advantage. The average household debt in JNK compares favorably with the neighboring states being significantly lower than Himachal and Haryana or national average, thus offering ample opportunities for further financial deepening, especially in the agriculture, high density farming, ag allied agriculture activities like dairy, sheep farming, fisheries and agriculture, housing, tourism infra, mini hydro and unconventional power projects, etc. With low penetration of financial services, the area offers significant opportunities for other financial services like insurance, assets, wealth management, depository, broking, etc. The bank has adequate infrastructure and footprint across the geography to capitalize on its opportunities. These growth avenues exist in, in the business as usual phenomena in this geography. However, going forward, there is expected to be a big, big add-on uh, effect as an outcome of the ambitious initiatives of the JNK government to attract sizable domestic as well as foreign investment in the sector like real estate, horticulture, tourism, healthcare, and other infrastructure. The area which would require special focus is the MPA management, where all avenues for affecting recovery shall have to be vigorously pursued to ensure worthwhile recovery and unlocking of value capital, valuable capital. The bank has been recording abnormal SMA figures through, though the slippages from the portfolio has been restricted. This area, of, this area of concern also needs to be addressed correctly through concerted campaigns sensitizing the borrowers to maintain financial discipline and a better repayment record, which would entail benefits like better rating and pricing, easy access to enhanced financing add-on and complementary facilities, etc. Which also putting in place, with all, while also putting in place the trends for delinquencies. Growing business in the rest of India geographies and evolving strategies for making the outside branches, outside of JNK branches, to adequately contribute to the bottom line of the bank is on the top of our agenda. We can replicate our success stories in agri lending and personal finance in JNK in select markets in the rest of India and complement the business volumes by taking exposure to smaller and mid corporate good rated borrowers and public sector units. Increasing share of non fund business and augmenting our non interest revenue streams is being strategized and duly incorporated in our business plans. Supplementing the revenue streams with adequate tabs on the controllable expenditure shall result in improving efficiency of the resources and finally moderation of the cost to income ratio to the desired levels. Here I would like to state that the cost to income ratio of the bank in GNK and Ladakh is, the lower, is in the lower 40s while the drag is coming from the rest of India business which needs to be specifically addressed. Capital adequacy is another area that we need to focus on. We are figuring at the lower end of the spectrum when it comes to CRAR, especially common equity tier one. The bank augmented its capital by rupees 1100 crores during the financial year 22 by way of preferential allotment of rupees 500 crores to the promoters, rupees 150 crores raised via ESPS, rupees 93 crore, crore via uh, QIP, and rupees 360 crores as tier two bonds. The response to the QIP was below the expected levels owing to the geopolitical strife which dampened the market sentiment. Now I would like to briefly take you through the initiatives that have either been rolled out during the quarter four of financial year 22 and the ones on the anvil for launch. The board of directors has been reconstituted with interruption of more independent directors having expertise in finance, accountancy, information technology compliance with all the regulatory prescriptions with regard to board and committees thereof is ensured, including the chairing of the board meeting by an independent director. Thus, splitting of post of chairman and managing director has been achieved. 
delegation of powers has been reviewed and the committee approach for taking material decisions has been adopted in line with the industry best practices. Succession planning of the top management level is currently underway to ensure desired focused attention and oversight of all the verticals and business lines for achievement of the corporate objectives to, e to each and every segment while avoiding any conflict of interest. We have also placed president level functionaries to oversee and drive credit and business operations while, man, uh, while maintain proximity with the operating levels at regional levels for rest of India and Jammu region. We, are also operationalized, we have also operationalized three cluster offices in rest of India in Lucknow, Mohali and Bangalore for driving business growth at these centers. We also conducted a strategy conclave to identify the potential future leaders and to evolve strategies through collective thinking for addressing the areas of concern. The annual business plan for financial year 22-23 was formulated well before the start of the financial year and promptly communicated to the operating levels to ensure a head start. We have reviewed the business model in the rest of India and have put in a plan seeking to leverage the network efficiency efficiently while aiming to gain traction in business growth. More sweating of increased productivity with improved profitability. While majority of the branches in the rest of India shall focus on retail, MSME and forex business, while some designated corporate business units would focus on increasing volumes through good rated small and mid-sized corporates and PSUs. The strategy has already started yielding results as for the first time after a number of consecutive quarters of degrowth, the rest of India credit portfolio has grown by over 6% on a Q&Q basis during Q4 of financial year 22. A process of monthly business and recovery reviews has been institutionalized to ensure that the growth momentum is consistently maintained every day, every week, every month, and every quarter. We have rolled out two special OTS schemes targeting NPA accounts of up to 15 lakhs and 15 lakhs to 5 crores, respectively. The response so far has been very good, and we are expecting to re resolve NPAs amounting to over rupees 200 crores under these schemes during the current financial year, during the current quarter. In addition, we have redoubled our efforts to pursue recovery of NPS vigorously by employing all available avenues. We are targeting to bring, gross, bring down the gross NPA of the bank to around 6% level by the end of the year. Hence, our uh, treasury operations, which has been shifted to Srinagar on experimentation basis, has been relocated at the commercial hub Mumbai to re instill market connect vibrancy and profit center orientation. The fresh capital infusion during the financial year supplemented by playing back, plugging back of the profit has resulted in capital buffers improving to 180 basis point over the regulatory minimum. However, we are looking forward to further augment the capital base during the current financial year, maybe after putting in a good uh, couple of quarterly results, which shall improve on the pricing and attractiveness of the bank stock. The JNK UT government has earmarked to be 200 crore in the annual 2023 budget for infusion of further capital in the bank. However, instead of increasing the promoter stakes, we would like to increase the public holding. On the IT and digital front, we are on the cusp of completing rollover to advanced core banking solution, Finacle 10, total centralization and automation of CASA accounts, account opening, and loan processing, loan appraisal for all personal loans, full automation of EWS framework, while we have already migrated to an advanced version of MPay, which is our mobile payment app, automated auditing, upgrading of MIS with real-time dashboards as part of a decision support system and improved internal control to name a few. We are targeting to achieve a, a, a digital to total transaction ratio of 85 to 90 percent by the year end, thereby bringing a higher operational excellence, reducing cost to serve and releasing more resources for marketing assignments. We also look some tough calls during the last quarter to reduce the stress in the balance sheet and also on the profit and loss to pay way for a better and sustained performance going forward. For classification of NPAs, 
we recognized even the non non financial infirmities like pending stock statement submission of stock statements audited financials that caused delay in renewal of such loans though not being 90 days past due on financial obligations earlier during the financial year the board of the director uh, the board of the bank had approved creating a corpus segregating to rupees 319.36 crores on voluntary basis for pension liabilities on account of medical allowance and variable pay through though this was not mandated under as 15 the board had approved funding this corpus over a period of 5 years starting from financial year 21 22 the bank had made a contributions of rupees 48 crores towards this fund during this during the first three quarters of financial year 22 we took a call to fully fund the corpus during this year itself thus providing the remainder of rupees 271 crores fully during the quarter 4 so that we are not precluded from declaration of dividends in the financial year 23 and beyond when we are envisaging better results and resumption of dividend payments to our shareholders coinciding with the reformative business processes initiated within the bank we are witnessing some positive changes in the overall business environment the pandemic is ending economic activity is gaining traction jkut is receiving a huge number of tourists and a good season seems to be offering overall a promising start for the year financial year 2023 my focus during the first few months at the helm of this bank was on revamping the structure the business model growth strategies and firmly put in place a framework that can lead this institution to truly realizing its potential by capitalizing on its unique attributes and core competencies i will now briefly run through the financial numbers of the bank in q4 and financial year ended march 22 the bank has clocked a yoy growth of 6% in deposits and 5% in advances the growth in q4 has been promising with deposits growing at 5% qmq and advances 3% qmq demand deposits have grown at an impressive rate of 14% during the quarter 4 but the highlight is the 6% qmq growth in the loan book and rest of india after its massive countless and consecutive quarters of degrowth our casa at 56.56% is among the best in the industry which lends us a cost edge as our cost of deposit is 3.65% for the year despite providing for some exceptional items as i mentioned earlier we have been able to register rupees 500 crores of 500 crore plus profit figures for the financial year delivering a 16% yoy growth after 7 years of muted profitability our nim remains stable and at a healthy level of 3.5% on the assets quality we have improved our gross npa to 8.67% that is 100 basis points down from the previous year likewise there has been improvement in net npa from 2.95 in 21 to 2.49 as on march 22 and the provision coverage ratio from 81.97% to the current level at 84.26% Fund capital adequacy has also improved by 103 basis points over last year to 13.23%, providing a headroom for the growth. Anticipating improvement in the operating environment, our guidance for the for the year 22-23 will be deposit growth of about 15 to 12 to 15%, advances growth of about 15% with GNC UT growing at about 20%. net recoveries in the range of 1000 crores credit cost of below 1% since we acknowledge your support and trust and we expect it to continue in the coming days i'm looking forward to more interactions with the analysts and investors fraternity in the days to come we are also contemplating a host and to host an investor analyst meet during the second and third quarter wherein we would like you to personally feel and observe the business environment in our home turf to gauge the systemic relevance of the bank for the twin duties of gnc and tata which in turn confers on it a value proposition which needs to be acknowledged and unlocked we can take some questions regarding the strategic plan and i would uh, as i have presented 
for any queries regarding the numbers, you can always contact our investigation department and we shall be glad to respond to it. We always look forward for your guidance and advice for improving our working. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may enter star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Any participant who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. We'll take the first question from the line of Renish Gova from ICSA Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir, uh, and thanks for uh, such a detailed presentation. So just a couple of things, okay. So uh, one is that uh, you know uh, we all are aware about the uh, our good uh, liability franchise uh, in JNK, uh, but when it comes to the asset side, you know we have our uh, own uh, learning curve on the asset side. Uh, so briefly, if you can throw some light, uh, let's say uh, on the asset side, uh, which product uh, will be our focus product going ahead, uh, and which geographies uh, you will target to grow that product. Yeah, thank you, Renish. Uh, good question. See, uh, Ren is actually all the segments like agriculture, retail, as well as MSME will be on our focus. And uh, the strategies we have uh, decided that uh, already we have a phone pay loan, which is a digital loan for the employees of a department only of the NK government. So now this is a phone pay loan facility that a digital loan has been rolled out to all the government departments. And going forward, in a month or so, we will be rolling out to all corporates of the JNK government. So that is one. And then going forward, we will be approaching the Ladakh UT also, so that the employees of that uh, UT also are covered under this scheme. And mm -hmm. the, the effort is that all the retail loans are done through digital mode only. And we are going forward, uh, the, we are now uh, very aggressively uh, working for the AMTs, Advances Monitoring Team, because as of now, as you know, that the assets, the MSMEs are basically spread out and the credit risk is spread out across the countries. So, mm -hmm. from first of, first of June, all the teams uh, uh, will be specialized teams, will be headed by the relationship manager, and a team will be uh, owning a, a number of accounts of 30 to 35, and it will be supported by the credit support officer. So these teams will be exclusively responsible for maintenance, growth, and audit-related issues of the MSME, which will give us definitely edge, and it will further improve the quality of our portfolio. Got it, sir. And, and sir, any growth numbers would you like to guide for? See, uh, as I've already told, we are looking for around 10 to 15 percent growth as far as the deposits is concerned. And we are looking for around 15% of growth in advances during the current year. And in the JNK UT, we are expecting a growth of 20% in advances. Got it, sir. And just the last question from my side on the margin. Uh, so, uh, you know, so we have already entered the uh, rising internet cycle. Uh, so, uh, you know, looking at your uh, asset mix and your deposit profile, uh, how should the uh, margin trajectory, uh, uh, you know, going ahead? I mean, do you foresee a margin expansion or, uh, let's say, margin will remain static at around current level, sir? So, Renish, uh, what we are thinking that our NIM should be uh, in this range only because uh, uh, our the uh, CASA uh, uh, portfolio is quite strong and we are confident that this will be maintained at around 56-57% level. And... Uh, uh, the, the credit growth which is expected mainly in the retail segment and agriculture segment. So we are confident that it will be maintained in the similar range. So our SAR rate is linked to the benchmark rate or how is it? Sir? So it is both. It's external also as well as MCL also. I think around 40% is 
uh, external and 60% is uh, MCLR. Okay, uh, so I'm saying the SAR rate, so not the asset book. Pardon, you have to repeat. Uh, so the saving saving rates are linked to the uh, repo rate or uh, it is the fixed rate book? The saving rate is, uh, as of now, is uh, fixed and, and then with respect to the RLR, that is linked to the repo rate. Uh, repo linked lending rate, that's the external benchmark rate. Our, but, uh, our, our, uh, our credit head, our uh, risk head is responding to this question, Renish. So, uh, so uh, if we look at uh, with respect to the margins, I think the margins are set to improve, as I said, rightly said, uh, because we do the hardening of the interest rate scenario, uh, because our uh, rate sensitive assets at, uh, are at a higher end than the rate sensitive liabilities. So, it will give some uh, benefit of that, and uh, going forward, the margin will be higher than this. Got it, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, that is from my side. Thank, thank you. A reminder to our participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may enter star and one. We'll take a next question from the line of Gaurav from Bowhead, India. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, welcome to the bank. Uh, I think it's a long time, you know, that we have had a stable CEO at the helm. So I'm sure that with your presence there, we can achieve uh, the numbers which, uh, you know, we have all been waiting for for the last five, six years. Uh, so with that, uh, you know, what about your capital raising uh, plans? You know, if you can highlight, uh, since we are already low on the PET one, what are our plans on the equity? As uh, thank you, Gaurav. Uh, see, as I have uh, covered in my opening remarks, so uh, last year we have uh, raised around 1100 crores, 1103 crores of the capital, and the same effort will continue this year also. Uh, government of JNK is expected to provide around 200 crores, which they have already budgeted. And we, uh, we are, we will be once uh, after a, a quarter or so. Once uh, the uh, we are confident that our rating will be improving with the uh, growth in budget uh, in the profitability as well as in the business. So we will be again reaching uh, going to the market for raising capital in the tier one as well as in tier two. Okay. Uh, sir, in terms of your operating profit, do you have any targets for FI23? Like uh, for FI22, you generated 1360 crore, 69 crore of operating profit. Do you have any target for FI23? Yeah, so uh, this year actually, Gaurav, uh, our operating profit has been impacted because of uh, uh, this provision which was to be, which was amortized for five years, but we have covered it this year itself. So that is the amount of around 270 crores. So going so that the, is so that is the nearest part of your exceptional items, right? It is not uh, in the operating profit. The operating profit which I'm referring to 1370 crore or that is excluding the exceptional item of 270 crore. Uh, that has affected our operating profit. That has affected this year, this quarter of operating profit. So going forward. Uh, uh, we are confident of uh, achieving a profit, oper operating profit of, you have the number? So it can be at least 25% growth on all the this year. Excluding. So we are expecting what of this 25% growth, uh, excluding this one time item uh, from this year. And so the uh, credit cost you mentioned 1%, you know, for FN3. So can you hint at the absolute number since there is some confusion, some banks give it on effect, some banks give it on advances. What does that 1% translate to in terms of absolute number? Okay. I'm sorry, Gaurav, please. Can you repeat? I am not able to hear. Uh, uh, Gaurav, uh, I'm sorry. I think you're on a hands-free mode. Can you switch it to mm -hmm. handset and speak? Yes, one It's not clearly audible. Is it better now? Yes, it's better now. Okay. So in your credit cost, you gave a guidance that you are, you know, for 1% credit cost for FI23. Uh, yes. I wanted to check the absolute number, you know, that 1% translates to what kind of absolute number for credit cost, the provision line item in your P&L. Yes. Actually, uh, Gaurav, the aging requirement for the year 23, it is below 500 crores. 
actually uh, we have provided extra additional pro we have made additional provisions for a number of accounts uh, for the current year also so the liability will be less than 500 crore so actually the credit cost will be below 1% though we have given a conservative figure of 1% it will be much below that figure so 1% would mean what uh, 100 crore I am you yeah, think yeah, less than 500 crore Okay, less than 500 crore. Yes. And sir, in terms of your employee cost, you know, since on a full year basis, uh, that has gone up by around 20%, around 18%. So for FY23, how do you see that line item, employee cost? Yeah, actually, for, that is a matter of concern for us, actually, because uh, we are among the uh, high uh, uh, cost to income ratio. Uh, yeah. Uh, mainly contributed by employee cost. So uh, one is that the productivity of the employees as we have covered that marketing teams will be uh, now strengthened and uh, rolled out in all the zones of the bank and uh, the productivity and profitability of the employees will be a focus, number one. Number two, the areas uh, which I think uh, need more focus is the increase of income, non-interest income as well as other income of the bank that will also improve the cost to income ratio. And uh, plus, uh, the, wherever the income leakages are there in the form of uh, uh, commitment charges or the processing charges, etc., that will be plugged proactively. Okay. And sir, lastly, what's the modified duration for our uh, investment book? Uh, just a moment. Let my uh, uh, risk hand will be responding this. Just a moment, please. You see, our AFS portfolio is very small as on date. The most of the securities in AFS are uh, short dated. That is the uh, CDs mostly and the C bills. So actually, uh, th those won't have um, uh, much of an impact. The residual sure. the maturity, maturity over there is less than one year, and definitely the modified duration is. Uh, far below one. So those won't actually have the impact of this hardening of interest rates. It won't affect their, because actually those are discounted papers and very short term papers. Uh, in fact, our SLR, this is, uh, sorry, AFS book is purely consisting of these securities as under. We were actually anticipating there will be a, uh, some uh, North Bay movement of the interest rates. The interest rates were actually bottoming out. So we were not taking any positions. We were not building our the HTM uh, book over the uh, last one or two years. Uh, actually, sure. you see, uh, yeah, that is why the yields from our investment book were also a bit low because we were actually uh, going with the short term these uh, investments only and uh, traps lending in other lands. So as to secure that we were actually anticipating that rates to go up and then there would have been erosion of value. Now we are trying, we are st we have started building this uh, HGM book also with the higher, uh, this uh, high coupon security, the better, better yields. So over this period, the yields will also improve. We had a lot of surplus and the surplus now being deployed at better rates will give better uh, returns and the interest income will definitely improve over this year. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. We got it. Thank you so much for your explanation and all that for your initiatives. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management of JNK Bank for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, uh, as I have showed already in my opening remarks, the bank is on the growth trajectory now. And uh, whatever the stress was there in the loan book has already been booked and uh, we are well capitalized also as compared to the last year. Of course, that effort will continue and uh, the, the, the provision coverage ratio is quite healthy and I'm sure that the uh, bank is bound to achieve new highs during this year. So I request all support from all our stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of ICS Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.